paint the blue cloth, the skin on the hands and the faces, as well as any skulls or bony bits, you're going to need four colors. You're going to need scale colors deep blue, Vallejo's Iraqi sand. So what I've done as part of my prep stage, when I primed the model black, I also airbrushed a coat of deep blue from scale 75. And this is just so I don't have to avoid, or so I can avoid having to hand paint a lot of these base coats in, particularly on the undersides, on the inner parts of the cloak. I can avoid the, the extra work of having to paint it in by hand. What I then do is uh, by hand start just basically layering and blending up from my deep blue into my Iraqi sand. So the next stage to paint on the model is going to be the blue of the, uh, the cloak. So usually that's the, um, the inner cloak for this one, the inner, um, what I consider part of the body. So this will be the bottom cloak right here on this model, as well as the arms and any sort of skin or skull elements are also painted with the same color recipe. Um, the only exception being for things like uh, faces, skulls, um, hands, any sort of exposed skin, I take the highlights much brighter. So all the blue, we're going to start with two colors. We're going to be using Scale 75's Deep Blue and Vallejo's Iraqi Sand. And we're going to um, highlight up by blending progressive amounts of the two colors together until we reach almost, I would say, uh, 70 or 80% Iraqi Sand, the 20% uh, Deep Blue. And that's over any sort of blue or uh, pale blue elements. I then take the highlights for uh, skulls, faces, and skin brighter. We mix in scale colors, white sands for our additional highlights. And we bring those up. Now, because we do end up using the airbrush afterwards to help smooth out these blends and um, refine essentially our, our layers, right? To, to, to smooth out the transitions. At this stage, we're looking to just quickly block in our, our highlights. We're not looking to create immediately perfectly smooth blends. We just want to work up the colors and, and, and get towards those bright tones. When you're batch painting an entire army, um, so what I did for, for big units of some of my Reapers, my Revenants, my Chain Rafts. I actually did this stage as well with the airbrush. And so um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to airbrush up to, I would say, um, maybe a 50-50 or like a 40-60 Iraqi sand uh, deep blue mix. And then you can proceed to highlight and uh, hand paint some of your more bright highlights. It's not quite as polished, I find, if you do it with the airbrush. You end up filling in a lot of these deep shadows and you lose a lot of potentially depth in the miniature. And what you end up having to do as well, once you um, paint all the blue, is you end up having to go back in. When you're dry brushing the base, you have to be a lot more careful not to get any of your base dry brush onto the blue. So two reasons why I'm doing it by hand on this miniature. One. Um, it's a little less wasteful um, mixing in the color mix for an airbrush for one single model usually isn't worth it in my opinion i think it's just a little um, less wasteful just to spend a bit of time um, show you how to do it by hand by hand blending it and then of course i can be a bit more messy with the base and not have to worry about being too careful about over painting i'm also able just to maintain some of those uh, deeper shadows in the pure pure deep blue while covering it up with the airbrush.
And before I proceed any further with highlighting the blue, particularly in the uh, skin of the hands, the face, and some of the energy wisps coming off of the skull, just take a bit of time to talk through how I'm approaching my highlighting and the reason for why it is also, again, so sketchy at this phase. Because I do end up using the airbrush to smooth out the blends and to add a bit of the nuancing afterwards, I can afford to be a little messier at this stage. And especially when it comes to army painting, I'm not overly concerned with perfectly smooth blends. You can see particularly in even some of my heroes for um, what I've already painted so far, the blends aren't perfectly smooth. If you actually look up close, you can see the brush strokes. You can see that I'm not overly concerned with hiding, I guess, all of my uh, my different layers, my different highlight steps. It's more, especially when it comes to army painting, I'm thinking tabletop view. If you're seeing the model from three or four feet away, does the blend look smooth? And then that's the way I approach it. And that's mainly to do with um, expediting the army painting process. I don't like spending forever on my tabletop models. I don't usually spend a lot of effort in perfecting all of the blends because I'm not trying to win any competitions with them, right? I want to come looking done, looking very nicely painted on the tabletop. And so as I'm approaching this highlighting phase, I'm very loose with it, very sketchy. The way I'm applying my highlights, I'm focusing mainly on where the robes meet the body. This is sort of the brightest point or the brightest highlights as I go. And then when you actually break down and start looking at the way that they've sculpted the cloth, you can actually sort of break out certain planes or certain folds where you can get some of these brighter highlights and get these plane changes to create these cool uh, points of contrast without too much effort. So for example, there is a bit of a, a flare right here around this tear. And so I, I've highlighted this plane on the bottom and then kept a shadow right here just to make it a little visually interesting. Nice and sharp, um, nothing fancy. Same with through here where the plane changes. I've added a, a pretty thick highlight, um, blended it out on this surface right here, created a bit of a pocket of shadow just to make it feel um, much more interesting and not quite like a flat, uh, flat surface. Same with this side. I'm picking out certain plane shifts, applying some very flat, bright highlights, and then contrasting it with some, some offset shadows. When it comes to the, uh, the skin, because I do take the skin so much brighter, um, I'm not looking to maintain really deep shadows, particularly on the knuckles. Um, maybe even where the fingernails are. Uh, similarly with the skull, I've gone fairly bright with it because I expect to keep pushing the highlights brighter and brighter and brighter. So now that we've gotten the robes pretty much as bright as we want to go, the next step is to start pushing the highlights on the skin and the skull. And for this, we're going to be using Iraqi sand and then white sand. So we're going to start by taking pure Iraqi sand to start picking out some of these highlights. Uh, you'll want to dilute the paints a little bit more if you're uncomfortable with um, feathering your paints out. I'm moving very quickly with this, very sketchily with this, and I'm comfortable jumping straight into the Iraqi sand because I know I can feather out some of these blends. Once we've gotten a nice coat of Iraqi sand down, we're then going to start mixing in progressive amounts of white sands, going to pure white sands on places like the knuckles, the nails, uh, parts of the bone. I'm not quite sure how bright I want to take this blue energy section stretching between the fingers right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all of the skin and the skulls first, and then potentially revisit this section to refine.
we've taken the highlight on the arms, the skull, and the face to pure white sands. And you see that as I've basically been progressing and pushing up my highlights, I've also been slowly neatening up um, part of my sketch phase. I was very rough in terms of blocking in some of the original uh, first highlight passes on the arms, especially the hands. But as I work my way up to white sands, I neaten it up, I tighten it up, and as I really dive in and figure out the different planes, different angles, and sort of where my light source is coming from, how it's going to create my lights and shadows, I just slowly fine tune and neaten up the painting. And now that I'm pretty much at this white sands phase, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna go back in with the airbrush and we're going to tighten up some of our initial blends. And the way we're gonna be doing this is doing some glazes pretty much with uh, a mix of eight or nine parts water to one part paint. And we're just gonna slowly underpaint and smooth out our rougher blends. We're gonna add some nuancing to some of our brighter elements before I go back in with white sands to touch up. And then I wanna bring up the skull that he's holding up to pure white, just to add a bit of separation between his uh, hands, his, little, his bony fingers. So using the airbrush, we're using a dual action infinity for this. The technique is fairly straightforward. Again, it's a very, very diluted mix, uh, eight or nine parts water to one part paint. We're gonna drop the compressor to about one, 1 1.5 PSI. Sorry, to about 15 uh, PSI, which is about one or 1 1.5 bar. And essentially what we're looking to do is push down for air, pull back for just a little bit of our uh, watered down paint, and then back to air to dry. The combination of heavy dilution, um, the constant dry spray, dry pattern, and the low PSI ensures that we're essentially applying very, very thin coats, sort of like a glaze. It'll dry with the airbrush, and then we just slowly build up our color progressively over time. We're going to start with our mid-tone mix, probably a 50-50 mix of Iraqi sand deep blue, and then we're going to slowly push into pure deep blue. And then finally, rather than spray uh, from the direction of our light source, we're actually going to spray from the direction of our shadow. And in this way, we're going to preserve our highlights and focus the color mainly in the shadowed elements. So you can see that as I am spraying, just how heavily diluted it is. It's essentially, it's essentially like a, a very watercolor mix. It's mostly water, just a touch of paint. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to, as we're spraying air, pull back for a bit of color, and then back to, back to air to dry. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to just keep adding uh, deep sea blue or deep blue into this mix, adding extra water as we go just to help uh, dilute it as necessary. And we're going to keep pushing our shadows and working our way into our deepest recesses.
So you can see with the airbrushing done, we've really polished and tightened up a lot of our initial uh, blending and layering. It was very, very rough, especially in this bottom part of the cloak before, but now with the airbrushing done, you can see that it's much, much smoother. I've, because I really like sort of that, that painterly style, being able to see some of those brush strokes, I haven't gone for perfectly smooth blends. I've maintained uh, some of those layers. I've kept them a little bit visible because I like being able to see those brush strokes. It's a, a style that I've sort of developed and I continue to maintain, something I really, really enjoy the look of. I also feel that while yes, you can do perfect blends from one, one color to another, doing it all the time for everything just feels a little flat and a little lifeless to me. So I like keeping those in and having those, those um, painterly strokes in there to give whatever I'm painting a little more life. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go back in with some of our various mixes of deep blue Iraqi sand and white sand, just to touch up some areas, refine some highlights. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with some AK white, just to pick out some of the highlights on the skull to create that separation between the hands and the skull. Now, at this stage, we're gonna be doing it um, with some very diluted glazes. We're gonna be a little more careful with our touch-ups because I don't wanna go back in with the airbrush again. And so I'm gonna be a little more careful, a little bit more refined with my brush strokes and just uh, not be as messy as we would have been in the previous sketching phase. And that's the blue on cold grass completed. You can see that by keeping a very limited palette, but then varying up 
um, the degree to which we push our, our lights and shadows and how bright we take our highlights, we can create a bit of a separation in sort of the different textures and the different elements while, while not introducing too many colors.